There are more stars in the universe than all of the grains of sand on every beach, every desert, every beach volleyball court and every sand pit on the entire earth. There are 10 billion galaxies and a billion trillion stars in the observable universe. A star is born in a nebula. A nebula is a giant cloud of gas and dust. The gas is hydrogen and under a gravitational pull the hydrogen gas starts to clump together and as more and more hydrogen clumps together the gravitational pull gets larger and larger and more and more hydrogen is pulled in and it clumps larger and larger and gets denser and denser and hotter and hotter until there's a massive giant ball of gas. At this stage it's called a protostar. This giant ball is so massive that the gravitational pull in the center is so strong that the hydrogen atoms fuse together. This is a process called nuclear fusion. This fusion releases massive amounts of energy and the star ignites and it begins to shine. Now this is the birth of a star. The fuel for the star is hydrogen and fusion of hydrogen atoms produces helium. Nuclear fusion creates the energy that powers the star. The energy produced by fusion reactions is pushing out from the core but is held in balance by the force of gravity. At this stage the star is called a main sequence star. A star will live in this state for most of its life. When the star runs out of hydrogen gas to burn for fuel it starts to cool down and because it doesn't have that same force pushing outwards the gravitational force becomes stronger and pulls the, uh, the star in on itself until it gets denser and denser and hotter and hotter until nuclear fusion occurs again but this time helium nuclei fuse together releasing massive amounts of energy and producing carbon and oxygen. When the helium atoms fuse even more energy is released so the star expands to form a red giant. When this happens to our Sun it will expand past the inner planets including the Earth. This is the beginning of the end for the Sun. It's going to be about 4 billion years away. As the outer layers expand further and further from the core the gravitational pull starts to lose hold and gas drifts off into space forming a planetary nebula, one of the most spectacular celestial bodies we see. Once the star has lost these outer layers, what is left is called a white dwarf. It's the dead remnant of a star. It's very, very dense. It probably has the, the same mass as half the size of, a, of, the, of the main sequence star, but much, much smaller, only about the size of our Earth. So you can imagine how dense that would be. And it gets cooler and cooler and cooler until it forms a black dwarf. And that's the end of its life. Stars that are much more massive than the Sun fuse heavier and heavier elements inside the core until it has an iron core. At this stage, no energy can be produced by fusion, so the core collapses, then there's a huge explosion and shock wave called a supernova. The contents of the star explode out into space, and all that is left is the very dense neutron star. For the most massive, for the most massive stars of all, it is believed that when the core collapses, a black hole is formed when gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. 